Welcome everyone, my name is Limbic, and today is patch day for Heroes of the Storm. So I thought for a quick video I would just go ahead and give you a brief overview of what has changed with this incoming patch. I'll go ahead and link the notes in the description just in case you don't want to listen to my voice. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing is a new hero! <coughs> We got the Lost Vikings! That was kind of a surprise. I thought we were getting these maybe next week, but nope, we got them now. So, uh, we'll definitely have a look at them. You'll probably get a Should I Buy of them tomorrow. I'm going to be splitting Should I Buy basically in two from this point on. So, before it was almost like a recommendation and a play guide in one, which was kind of weird. Now there's going to be one episode per week. That's a recommendation, like, should you spend your money on this? Are they going to be fun to you? Are they actually, you know, competitive? And then later in the week, there's going to be the guide, like, here's the talents I suggest you take. Here's some tips and tricks. So let me know what you think about that. Leave me a comment. And I know that people watch my videos, but you never leave me comments. Please, tell me something. Tell me what you think of my videos. Tell me how much you hate my stupid face. Anything. I want to hear from you. All right, so let's go ahead and briefly look at what the Lost Vikings can do. For those of you who do not know, there are actually three heroes in one that you are able to control separately, and you can even send like each of the three heroes into different lanes, and it should be very, very interesting. So, a few things to note here. When one of the Lost Vikings dies, it grants 25% of the experience that it would if a normal hero died to the enemy team, and... Their trait means that Lost Vikings actually have reduced death time. So, that's pretty interesting. That means that, you know, it's not like murky where you can just die all the time and not care, but apparently you don't have to be quite so concerned about the Viking dying, which kind of makes sense, right? If you're controlling three at once, it's going to be a little more difficult to keep them all alive, especially if you have them at different points on the map. So, apparently the basic abilities have to be unlocked through talents, so that's almost more like, you know, League of Legends or Dota, where you have to level up in order to gain access to all of your abilities. So let's look at Spin to Win. Deals damage around each Viking can be unlocked at level 4. <clears throat> Sorry, apparently there's something in my throat. Spin to Win can be unlocked at level 4, so you have to choose between having access to one of your abilities or picking one of the other level 4 talents. I imagine that's going to be a hard sell for any other talent over having one of your abilities, you know what I mean? Like, how good would a talent have to be for you to choose it over having access to your abilities? So their W is jump. All Vikings become temporarily invulnerable. Of course, we have no idea at the moment how long that invulnerability lasts, but it can be unlocked at level 7, and then at level 16, wow, you get your E, Norse Force. All Vikings temporarily gain a shield. So, of course, we have no idea how long that shield lasts or how much health the shield is worth. We don't really know much about these heroes at the moment, but you should learn more tomorrow. And should I buy? You should definitely watch that. Eh. Their mount, go, go, go. The Vikings gain increased movement speed for a few seconds, so it's not really a mount. It's apparently just like a temporary speed boost. Uh, again, no idea how much the speed boost will be, how long the cooldown of this ability will be. We don't know. Their trait, as I mentioned before, fast restart, death time is reduced for the Lost Vikings, and their heroic ability choices play again. All Vikings are revived and teleported to the Summoning Vikings, so that seems like it'd be a very good idea to use if, say, a team fight's about to start, you get all the Vikings to where they need to be. And Longboat Raid. Summon a Longboat and go on a Viking Raid. So the way I interpret this is, when you're in the Longboat, you gain access to different abilities. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, general user interface, although Team League is not available with today's patch, those who achieve player level 40 will earn a new progression reward, which indicates they are eligible to compete in Team League. This reward will be displayed in blah 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 blah. So basically, all we can glean from that is that in order to play in Team League, you will need to be level 40. This I found rather interesting. In-game communication. It is now possible to view recent in-game chat messages by opening the chat box to type a message. Only the most recent messages will be displayed this way. Additional improvements will arrive in future updates. So before, there was no way to see previous um, 
things that people said. So if you kind of missed it, say you were distracted and you have no idea what that person said, that would kind of be lost forever unless you asked them to repeat themselves, which probably wouldn't happen. But now you can see what your teammates were telling you. And here's the part I found interesting. The following items have been temporarily disabled for further evaluation and improvements. The emote menu. So for those of you who don't know, previously you could hold down the Y key and that's how you could say things to the entire, everyone in the game. So you could say like, hello, well played, thank you, all that good stuff. And the ability to send GG chat messages to opponents in the moment after a core is destroyed. So previously, once the core, you know, broke apart, if you typed anything into the game, it would actually broadcast to the enemy team as well, and that's how you say GG to the enemy team, but they disabled that. I assume they decided that maybe people were being kind of rude at the end of games and saying nasty things to the enemy team or something, and bear in mind that these are not gone forever, they just said that they're temporarily disabled for further evaluation and improvements. Blizzard really has been going down this path of limiting the amount of communication you have with the enemy. You can see this very much in Hearthstone, and they seem to be going down the same path in Hero, so it seems to be something that they rather like. Quest Log! A new Quest Log button has been added to the lower right portion of the navigation bar next to Friends List button, so they're basically just making it a lot easier to look at and deal with quests. They removed the uh, Daily Quest tab from the player profile. They just gave the whole player profile um, an overhaul, so seems like a whole bunch of nice things have been added. A Match History tab, a Statistics tab, very nice. Penalties for leaving games. I know this is going to be really important to a lot of people. The tracking and penalties for leaving in-game progress, quick match, and hero league games before they are finished have been changed. Leaving multiple hero league or quick, ma quick match games without reconnecting will now flag the player to receive the... Po oh my goodness, words. Let's try that again. Leaving, mo leaving multiple hero league or quick match games without reconnecting will now flag the player to receive the following penalties. The flag player will be disallowed from queuing for Hero League games until a quick match game is played to completion. That was already there. Leaving additional games early will cause the number of quick match games required to increase. I thought this was something that should have been there. Maybe it was just they had to actually develop that, but I'm very happy to see this change. Basically, this means that the um, punishment for continuing to abandon games early just because you got mad at your teammates or whatever stupid reason is going to increase, which means that the more you do it, the more you'll be punished, which I think is much better than just every time you leave a, a hero league, you'll have to play just one quick match and then all's good. When queuing for quick match games, the flag player will be teamed up with other flag players who have similarly left games early. So this is kind of a nice way to try to pool all the nasty players with other nasty players. And I like that a lot. The system will track players' recent games. If a player has not left any games prematurely for some time, then leaving a single game for reasons outside of that player's control will not trigger these penalties. So, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by for reasons outside of that player's control. Do they mean if you disconnect, then you won't be penalized? Do they mean if, you know, something comes up in real life and you just have to abandon the game? I don't know. But I do like this system. If you are normally a good player, what they're saying is that if you just, you know, have to leave once, then they're not going to freak out about it. It's only if you continually uh, leave games, which is very good because things happen. We all know that. Sometimes you lose your internet. Sometimes an emergency happens in real life and you just have to go. And that's not fair to punish people who are normally good players over, you know, things like that. When a player who is flagged for leaving games early joins a party, the entire party will also be subject to these penalties. Please note that this will not cause party members to be flagged individually, blah 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 blah. So this is something that I know Dota does. It basically means that if someone in your party is <clears throat> a nasty player, then everyone in the party kind of has to suffer the penalties. But if you just kick that nasty player, then everything's all well and good. So this kind of... Uh, it almost encourages you to try to encourage your friends to not be nasty players, because then if you want to play with them, you'll have to suffer their penalties too. Players penalized in this way can track the 
or can earn back the ability to play in Hero League and be matched with non-leaving teammates. Simply play the assigned number of quick matches, quick match games to completion and stop leaving games, they say. I like that. Leaving a Hero League... <clears throat> Leaving a Hero League game during draft mode will now only penalize and flag the player who left the draft and will no longer penalize the rest of the player's party members. In addition, the flag player will lose a significant number of ranked points upon leaving draft mode. This I do not agree with at all, by the way, because there is actually legitimate reasons for leaving during the draft. If you see that your team comp is just horrible and your allies are already yelling at each other and you can tell it's just going to be an awful game, you are perfectly justified, in my opinion, to just kind of take the fall for everyone and leave that and hope that everyone in there can get a team that will cooperate more. And if you do that, that does not mean you're a worse player. You do not deserve to lose points. I do not agree with this at all. Yes, there are people who leave the draft just, you know, out of rage and do deserve to be punished for that, but I don't think that this is the way to do it. You know, that's just my opinion, of course. There's still time for this to change. I'm not freaking out about it or anything. I'm just, you know, my personal statement, I do not agree with this at all. I think that this is bad. All right, art. So they've updated the core, and now displays shield impact effects when attacked, as long as the shield remains, that's nice. Upon destruction, the core now produces a nexus coin, rather a crystal. That's interesting, I kind of like the crystal, we'll have to see uh, how the coin looks. Siege and Bruiser, Mercenaries, Grave Golems, the Garden Terror, and the Sky Temple boss have received updated animations. That's interesting, considering how new the Sky Temple boss is, and how better its animations looked compared to everyone else's. So I find that rather interesting. We'll have to see how that looks. Watchtowers on the Sky Temple Battleground have received updated art. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hearthstone has received visual effects. Okay. You know, these are not very interesting. Dance, victory, and taunt animations have been added to a number of heroes. That's interesting. Kerrigan has new ability icon art. Uh, all right. Um, several heroes have received animation polish. All that good stuff. I'm not going to read all of this. You can check this out for yourself if you really care that much. Shop bundle packs. The Pajama Party Lost Vikings bundle has been added to the in-game shop for a limited time. I like the Pajama Party Lost Vikings. I think that's really, really funny. I'm not sure if I'll actually buy that because, I don't know, I'm just... Skins in Heroes of the Storm do not really amaze me that much, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just since I have to spend so much money buying all the heroes anyway that I'm having a harder time being sold on spending more on skins? I don't know. Uh, sound. I like this. Betrayer Malfurion has received unique dialogue effects as long as with um, Crypt King Tassadar. That's what I really like that. I hope that they do that for more skins. It makes, maybe that would actually make skins valuable to me. Designing gameplay. A loss of control bar will now appear when heroes are silenced. That's to do with stuns. Murky and the Lost Vikings deaths are now represented in 0.25 increments on score screens as killing a Murky or one of the Lost Vikings awards 25% of the normal XP amount earned by killing another hero. So as I mentioned before, so this means that before when you would kill Murky like 20 times and then you would open up the score screen and it would still show Murky with zero deaths, I guess now they're basically saying now that would show Murky with five deaths because you killed him 20 times. All right. Collecting various battleground items, doubloon, skulls, seed, regeneration globe should now be more responsive. Blah, 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 blah. Talents! All heroes, including Murky and the Lost Vikings, now count as full credit towards talents which require hero kills such as gathering power. So they buffed gathering power just a little bit. Level 20 changes. Swift Storm has been removed. Did anybody use that? I don't think so. That's probably why they removed it. Rewind has been moved from level 13 to level 20, and it's been removed from many heroes. I like this a lot. I think that Rewind was just kind of overpowered every time, in my experience, there was a hero who had Rewind available to them. That was just the one you would take, and I guess Blizzard's saying, nope, we don't like that. We want you to feel like you have to choose at each level, which is... Uh, philosophy that I can definitely agree with. And they remove Rewind from so many people. Now it only appears on Anubarak, Arthas, Brightwing, Nova, Malfurion, Muradin, Murky, Tassadar, Tyrande, Rhaegar, and Zeratul. And of course, this is now your level 20 talent, so they really realized how powerful Rewind is, and of course now it's no longer on heroes such as Kerrigan, which in my opinion makes her significantly weaker. 
And they added a few new level 20 talents. Nexus Blades provides 20% increased attack damage and basic attacks slow enemies by 20% for one second. Found on the following heroes, Illidan, Kerrigan, Sonya, Thrall, Tyrael, Zero Tool. This is interesting. I'm not quite sure if this... I, I don't know. Maybe this will be good on ranged heroes, such as... Well, it's not on Vala, but... Hmm. Who would this be good on? I'm not sure. Seems like Bolts would still be better. Anyway, we have Nexus Frenzy, increases both attack speed and basic attack range for 20%, found on the following heroes, Jaina, Raynor, Sergeant Hammer, Tychus, Tyrande, Vala. I mean, again, bear in mind these are level 20 talents, so they sound nice, but is it really better than what you already have available to you? Hardened Shield, activate to reduce all incoming damage by 75% for 4 seconds, 60 second cooldown, found on the following heroes, basically, you know, the tanks and Gazlo. Fury of the Storm, every 5 seconds the next basic attack will deal an additional 200 damage to the primary target and 500 damage to each nearby minion or mercenary. That sounds terrible, <laughs> in my opinion, but yeah. we'll see, we'll have to see. There's no way to be really sure until it's actually tested. And it's found on Gazlo, Nazebo, Sergeant Hammer, the Lost Vikings, and Zagara. Kaldan Mule's been nerfed. It uh, multiple cannot repair the same structure anymore. The duration has been reduced to 40 seconds, but the cooldown is still 60 seconds, so you can no longer have continuous mules. It does restore ammunition more quickly, though, now, and its health is now 140 plus 43 per level, rather than 500 for the entire match. So this means that it'll have less health during the earlier levels, but more health as the game goes on. Gathering power, additional or initial ability power has been reduced from 8% to 5%, and the maximum ability power bonus has been reduced from 20% to 15%. I mean, okay. Ice block ability cooldowns will now continue to run, and persistent auras will continue to take effect throughout ice block's duration. This was added in a previous patch. Okay, I'm not sure why it's here then. Regeneration Master now grants 4 health regeneration upon learning the talent. Alright, now we're on to hero changes. Abathur, Evolve Monstrosity, Minion Stack Bonus increased from 4% to 5% health and damage. Monstrosity Health increased from 600 plus 60 per level to 600 plus 72 per level. Monstrosity now takes 50% less damage from minions and structures. I still think that Abathur is not going to be useful. He was way over nerfed in my opinion and in the opinion of most people in the community and I really hope that they do look at him because in my opinion, he is the most interesting hero in the game, and it is sad to see him in the current state that he is in. Uh, I'm not actually going to read every single one of these talents because that would take me forever. I'll just read um, the most important one, so let's see. Arthas was actually nerfed a little bit, which I find interesting. I find it interesting that they nerfed Arthas by a lot. I mean, Frozen Tempest increased the mana drain, but they also increased the radius, so I guess that's fine. Uh, they increase. Well, okay, I guess Frozen Tempest was actually buffed. Summon Sinjugosa was buffed, so I guess they're trying to make that ability useful. Um, they nerfed Army of the Dead pretty significantly. They nerfed Rune Tap pretty significantly. I mean, an additional percent. That's not to be. That's not insignificant, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, well, okay, I, they nerfed him in some areas and buffed him in some others. I still think it's a little strange that they would change him so much. They nerfed Brightwing, um, they increased the phase shift cooldown from 30 to 45 seconds, so that's a 50% increase, and, uh, they increased the shield scary scaling of the phase shield talent, which I don't, as far as I know, nobody took, right? Uh, the mana cost of Polymorph has been increased. Pixie Dust has been nerfed pretty hard. So I guess they're trying to say, yeah, we don't like how Brightwing is pretty much objectively the best support in the game right now, so we're trying to bring her down to the level of everyone else, which is something I can agree with. Um, Chen's been changed a little bit. Diablo's been changed. Nothing too amazing here. Uh, Kerrigan's gotten a new talent, Psionic Pulse. That affects Primal Grasp, I guess. Is Psionic Pulse new? I don't know, actually. I think it's new. Uh, let's see. You know, Raynor has gotten a few changes. He's gotten some new talents. Uh, Sergeant Hammer's gotten a new talent. 
yeah, here's what I find rather interesting. They changed Arthas a lot, but they left Stitches alone, so... I guess they're happy with the tank situation at the moment. They increased the cooldown of Hook from 14 to 16 seconds, and they reduced the damage of Gorge from 200 plus 50 per level to 100 plus 25 per level, so they actually cut that damage in half, so never mind, that actually is a really significant nerf. And yeah, there's just a whole bunch, you know, here's bug fixes up, arm art, all that good stuff. You can, if you're interested in every single last um, thing, you can go ahead and read the notes in the description below. So thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's been a full of ums and uhs. I hope you enjoyed it though. Let me know what you think of the changes I'm thinking to the format of should I buy? Do you like this idea of basically when you know whenever a new hero is going to be coming out you'll get the recommendation right away and then later in the week you'll get the build order guide let me know what you think about that thank you very much for watching my name is Limbic, and i will see you all next time <laughs>